What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com. In today's video, we're gonna be wrapping up the Adobe Illustrator Basics video series in part six. Mm -hmm. Now, over the last five videos, I've tried to cover most, if not all of the basics for you guys. And today, I wanted to leave you with something a little bit more intermediate to advanced, just to build off of that foundation that we've now established. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to combine some of these things, such as using the blend tool with the envelope warp and distort tools, I'm also going to show you how to use the gradient mesh tool. And in addition to that, I will be showing you how you can combine text with 3D in Adobe Illustrator. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up Adobe Illustrator and just create this new document here. Um, I have mine set to tabloid size, 17 inches wide by 11 inches high. And let's just go ahead and change that to RGB color mode. Now I'm going to be using a few of the things that we've covered already, but I'll start off just by grabbing my pen tool. And down here I'm going to make sure that I have no fill color. I just want to have a black stroke, a black line like this. All right, and what I'm going to do, hopefully by now you guys have experimented with the pen tool a little bit on your own and you'll know how to kind of use these anchor points and handles in order to create the kind of shapes and curves that you want and this is just something that will get a little bit easier the more that you do it so definitely get in there you know experiment with it have some fun with it and just kind of play around to see what you can come up with all right so right now I just have two lines I'm gonna select my top line and now I want to adjust the stroke. So we're going to come over here to our stroke option, or you could go up to window, stroke. And I'm just going to increase the weight of this line to about four points. Okay, from here I'm going to grab my direct selection tool, which is also A on the keyboard. Grab this point just by clicking on it once, and then I'm just going to move it as close as I can to that other point here so that they kind of match up like that. From here I'm going to select both of these lines, come up to my object menu and choose blend, blend options. Now we did touch on the blend tool a little bit, but this is kind of a, a cool looking effect that you can get using the same tool. So instead of choosing smooth color or specified distance, we're going to leave it on specified steps and say somewhere between 8 and 10 and hit OK. Now you can come back up to the object menu and choose blend make, or you can just hit command option B and you'll get this cool kind of, um, I don't know, it kind of looks like a, a wave of sorts from, from going from a thick line to a thinner line. And what's nice about this is that you can come back to your blend options and you can always, you know, check off the preview box and you can change this number. Let's say you want to make it 14 instead, then you'll get more lines in between this transition. And once you're happy with that, you can leave it here, or if you wanted to, you can come to expand, and that will basically change this into a, it'll change everything into points, just like we had done previously uh, with our text. It's basically like changing this to outlines. So here you see we have this wave shape. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller just by holding the shift key and dragging inwards from the bottom right corner. And now I want to make a copy of this. So I'm going to hold down, If in case you guys remember, you hold down Alt Option and the shift key and drag straight down. And now what I want to do is come up to object and we're going to combine this with our envelope distort. Now you saw me do this with the text where I just, you know, chose make with warp and you can get these kind of effects. They're all kind of, you know, presets, if you will, that will allow you to, you know, mess around with and configure these parameters, which is pretty cool. You can get some interesting looking elements or, or you know, you can get some interesting looking results by messing around with these. But let's say, Instead of that, you want to come up to Envelope Distort and maybe do something a little bit more customized. So I'm going to choose Make with Mesh. And this is something that we haven't really looked at yet, but Envelope Mesh basically allows you to take this shape and determine, you know, inside of this box, inside of this area, how many rows and columns you want to have. All right, so for now, I'm going to leave this set to four rows and four columns, but you can always come back and modify this. And you'll see what it does is it's adding these exactly like it said, four columns and four rows. Now what you can do from here is come back to your direct selection tool and you can literally grab any of these points or you can hold down shift and grab multiple points 
like this. And you see as I do this, you're getting handles in here. Let me just zoom in. I'm getting these handles, right? So now I can just kind of move these around independently and you have much more control over the way that you will be distorting your shape. Let's say I want to grab this entire row here and just move it up like that. Or you can do it with individual points as well or maybe you just want to grab two and you'll see what kind of uh, you know results you can get that way. All right, so this is just another cool way to kind of customize uh, some of these shapes that you want to warp and blend together. But something like that is kind of cool. And then of course you can always apply the regular um, envelope warp presets that I showed you guys before as well. But this is kind of a nice way to just create some you know background elements for your artwork or to just kind of play around with it and see what kind of things you can come up with. Uh, but these kind of lines really can look cool sometimes as background elements in art. All right, so that's one thing that I wanted to show you guys. The next thing is the uh, gradient mesh tool. Now, without going too deep into this, I just wanted to touch on it briefly. So all I'm gonna do here is press L on the keyboard to get this ellipse tool, hold down shift and drag out a perfect circle like this. And now we're gonna come over here to the gradient mesh tool. I haven't really shown you guys this too much, but basically the way it works is that you click and it's going to add a point, right? Just like anything else. but the cool thing is that you can then start to add other points, right? So I'm kind of adding one in each of these four quadrants like this. And now if I select the entire thing, I can come down here and change my fill color and I'll select kind of like a medium grayish blue, something like that. All right, but now what's cool is that I can select these points with my direct selection tool, come back over here and I can actually change the color of these points. So let's say I wanted to copy that color, that slightly darker grayish blue. I'm going to click on this point, hold down shift and click here, double click again and change the color so that these are all that slightly darker shade of grayish blue. Now I can come up to this point on the upper left area and make kind of a brighter, more saturated blue like that. Okay, and then maybe somewhere in the middle we'll make it slightly darker. And this is actually going to help us um, get some depth in our shape. So you can kind of create a more realistic looking object um, by adding more points and changing the colors and everything like that. So I'm going to select a few more of these points, come over here and maybe we'll make it just like a white, like there's a strong bottom light coming in. And we can also select some of these points to go even darker on these other parts of the shape. All right, and you can see how quickly you can start to add some detail and depth uh, to these kinds of shapes when using the gradient mesh tool. Now I've seen some people who are able to create you know, full on realistic looking portraits with this, which is amazing. But uh, for me, I, I haven't experimented too much with this, but it's something that I wanted to at least touch on to introduce you guys to the concept. But maybe it's something that we can revisit at a later time. All right, and the next thing that I wanna show you guys is doing uh, 3D with text. Now, I've shown you some cool things that we can do with text already in one of the previous lessons, but this is something that I haven't really touched on again. So I'm just gonna type out a word here. We'll just go with depth for now. And I'm just gonna make a copy of it, grab this and convert it to outlines. Now, hopefully, you, you know, if you guys have watched the previous lessons, you've seen me do this before, but it's just going to convert our live text into a shape. Now from here, I'm just gonna hold down Shift and Alt to make it a little bit bigger. And what I wanna do first is warp it a little bit. So just like we did before, come up to Envelope Distort, Make Warp, and let's go with Flag for this one, okay? Nothing too crazy, I just wanna add a little bit of uh, interest to it here, so maybe something like that, and then hit OK. All right, so now that we have this envelope warp, I'm gonna come up here to the Effect menu and choose 3D, Extrude, and Bevel and you'll see that I get this whole new dialog box. So from here we can check off preview and right now you can't really tell what's happening because it's all just black but if I come down to shading color click on that menu and choose custom I can actually change the color in here to anything you want. Alright you also have this little preview area here that allows you to change the direction of your light or your light source so you can modify that as well. Alright you can move it to the back of the object you can move it in front and choose where you want to place that light. 
All right, and as, in addition to that, you have control over things like uh, the surface, if you wanted to do a wireframe, uh, diffuse shading, plastic shading, or no shading at all. All right, so for now, I'm just going to leave this on plastic shading. And, you know, another thing that's cool about this is that you can change the extrude depth. So let's say instead of 50, I want to make it 120. And I can just preview that as well. And you also have this cool option up here which allows you to rotate this in pretty much any way that you want and preview it in real time. So once you're happy with your 3D text, go ahead and hit OK. And there you go. So what can I do with this now? I can make a copy of it. I'm going to select it and come up here to Object, Expand Appearance. And what this is going to allow me to do, just like before, is have more control over this by breaking it up into uh, shapes and points. So now I can grab my direct selection tool and say I want to hold down shift and grab the face of each of these letters. I can come down here and change the color. Say I want to make it brighter so that you can really see the text there. I can do that. And another cool thing is that I could further warp this if I wanted to. So I'm going to grab the face of these letters. Actually, let's do it on this one. Expand appearance. All right, grab the face of each of these letters and just delete them. All right, so now you basically have your extrusion without the face of the letters, okay? I'm just gonna move these guys off to the side here. And now what's cool is I can take this and I can warp it so that it'll basically become, you know, something that we can't even really recognize. It's not gonna look like our text that we had before. All right, we're just gonna mess around with it and just create some crazy uh, shapes here based on our 3D text. Something like this is kind of cool. Go ahead and hit OK. And this is just going to be kind of an abstract shape. So what we're going to do again is come up to Object Expand, hit OK. And now I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift to make a copy of it, move it up, and we'll come up to Object, Transform, Reflect, and choose Horizontal. So now we'll get kind of a, a perfectly uh, symmetrical copy of this. Now I'm going to select both of these, hold down the shift key, and just rotate this like so. Make it a little bit smaller by holding the shift key and dragging inwards. And you have a pretty cool looking shape. So let's take it one step further. I'll select both of these shapes. And we're going to now combine this with our blend tool. So I'm going to come back to object, blend, make. And you get this crazy kind of uh, kaleidoscope effect or geometric shape effect. And you can still come back up here to your blend options and modify these settings as well. And as long as you have preview checked off, it'll show you what that looks like in real time. All right, so even something two copies, or you can go up to you know 25 copies. It's entirely up to you, but just have some fun with it and experiment and play around. Now, if I wanted to, I could select this blue color here, come up to select, same, fill and stroke. And now I can change the color of everything that was that blue color to something else, right? And you start seeing how you can really kind of customize this a little bit more um, by changing the colors of that. And you know, I, I don't really have anything specific in mind. I just kind of wanted to show you guys a few cool things that you can do with some of the stuff that we've covered already, as well as a few additional tools that we hadn't touched on yet in this video series. So. Um, I hope that you guys have enjoyed the Adobe Illustrator Basics videos. If so, please you know, give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And feel free to drop us a note and let us know if there's any other things that you would like to see covered in future videos. So as always, I want to thank you guys for your support. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.